सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीकवाह तेजस्वीनाधीतमस्तुमा विदिषावह ओ शातिशातिशाति ओ भद्रंकर्णेशृणियाम देवा भद्रम पश्ये मक्षभ्यजत्रा स्थिरंगगम सी व्यशेम देवित यदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्व स्वस्ति नस्ताक्ष्यो अरिष्ट स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओ so we have seen that in this dialogue there is a teacher and a student who approaches who a student approaches the teacher okay <laughs> this we have to be very clear about because there is some kind of a uh, what is that spiritual romanticism sometimes i want the teacher to choose me and that leads to going to wrong teachers or uh, you know just giving the heart away to wrong teachers wrong kinds of ways because in every tradition whether you talk of the buddhist tradition hindu tradition wherever there is a teacher student uh, sufi tradition wherever there is a a teacher student connection is always the student who wants the knowledge who approaches the teacher all right not the other way around <laughs> if you are approached by a teacher run and who if the teacher says please come to me and study run the other way as fast as you can all right yeah because that is very suspect why should the uh, why the, the teacher is supposed to be a fulfilled human being why should the teacher want to be uh, seeking students so this is the uh, this is exactly the idea mm. and so now the uh, student has approached the teacher who is the student he himself is a sage of the and a teacher of the rig veda oh he is the teacher of the veda and wants the the teaching yes but when we say veda we mean the first part of the veda and what is the first part of the veda famous for it is a primer on how to be how to get prepared for this knowledge that is the first part of the veda how to get prepared for this knowledge and how to sublimate the desires into prayer so if i do nothing but pray for what i want i am already a spiritually superior being you may say how how am i a spiritually superior being because compared to the person who is keeping on wasting their calories spinning their wheels trying to get this get that get here get there get ahead get behind all these things compared to that one is spiritually more exalted if you just sit if you do nothing else but sit and pray because uh, there is there is an understanding a deep understanding on part of the person that which is uh, you know uh, given very beautifully in the bhagavad uh, gita and what is that karmani eva adhikarahate ma phaleshu kadachana you have a right you have a power to to what to action you do not have the power to the results to pro to producing the results you do not have the power to produce the results thereof and so this is very very important to understand extremely important it is to understand that you don't have the uh, power to transform the uh, transform your actions into desirable results that's why 
one gets undesirable results sometimes because the results are not in one's hands. And so the prayer, so why are the results not in my hands? If you ask the next question, then the answer is very clear. The results are not in my hands because of karma. Karma is there. My own karma is standing in the way and therefore, even though I have looked at all the known variables, I have accounted for the known variables, I am not able to produce the results. Why is there? Why is there? Because the karma stands in the way and that karma is in the form of Bhagavan. So therefore, praying to Bhagavan is not of my, you know, is, 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 is the only thing. I mean, just spinning the wheels is not of much use. Praying to Bhagavan to please move aside in the form of karma may help. How will it help? It will help because I, you know, I who wants this end, a desirable end, I want somebody to be happy, I want to not be bothered by something, I want to get ahead in certain areas of my life, all these things. And because I want these things, how do I, how do I go about getting them? The intelligent person understands that I am not in charge of fulfilling these uh, desires. I have the freedom to act, but I do not have the freedom to produce the desirable results. Why? Because they are in the hands of karma and karma is a synonym for us, for Bhagavan. So they are in the hands of karma means they are in the hands of Bhagavan. And so I go to the source. I go to the source and ask for the obstacles to be warded off. In praying, I set in motion a whole lot of antibodies that, that stop the prarabdha in its tracks. If possible, neutralize it completely, the karma, or if possible, mitigate it so that I can get a hold of the, um, the whatever desirable results of my action. So the Vaidika life is a total life of prayer. And that's what Ashvalayana is emerging from. And he has been doing this. He's a teacher of the Rig Veda. He teach, he's a teacher of Dharma, that means. The first portion of the Veda is just all about Dharma. So he's a teacher of Dharma. He's a teacher of correct Karma. He's a teacher in, in, in so many ways of all these things he's been teaching. And then teaching, teaching, teaching has given him a paripakvata, you know, pari akvata means a certain ripening of his thought process. His intelligence, when the, when the intellect is immersed in dharma, then it matures to ask relevant questions. What is Brahman? How come I don't understand I'm Brahman? How to experience Brahman? All these things. So many questions. Then uh, this is the this is where he is at. And so the question answer is a very powerful way of making the Upanishad a little less remote, a little less removed from oneself. Same thing in the Bhagavad Gita also we see the, the, the Lord uh, Krishna and Arjuna are in dialogue. It's not an ordinary the dialogue. It's a sacred dialogue. We saw that in the earlier session called Samvada, a sacred dialogue where the student does not keep questioning the teacher's decisions and the teacher's words, but the student questions only when the student does not understand something, does not question because of distrust. There is total trust and yes, there is non-understanding. That gives rise to, that may give rise to certain questions and that is okay. So that's why it is in the form of a dialogue. Because there are so many doubts and those doubts have to be, those doubts have to be gone before the knowledge can sink in. So atha means thereafter. Now you understand the meaning of thereafter. Thereafter is like encapsulating Ashvalayana's entire life. The whole life of Ashvalayana is encapsulated here. What all he did to get to this point of emotional maturity to be able to pursue this knowledge. 
not just for you know uh, once in a while i like the thought of vedanta no kabhi kabhi mere dil mein vedant ka khayal aata hai not really that's not what we are talking about here this is a committed pursuit this is not like oh uh, you know, I feel like having ice cream. I feel like having tattva masi. It's not like that. It's not a whim. It's not a fancy. It's not the. It's not some kind of an occasional pursuit, or it's not even a pursuit for the times in which one is in distress. No. It is because one is really speaking always in distress. Unless, unless and until one knows Vedanta, distress is somebody's mid. Everybody's middle name. So therefore, this is not some kind of an occasional dabbling into the into the shastras. It is a committed pursuit, a pursuit that which is a committed pursuit. Why is it called a committed pursuit? Without this pursuit, one is fit to be committed. That's to an asylum. That is why it is called committed pursuit. Without this, one cannot be. Without this, one cannot really live a sane life. And so, therefore, thereafter means it is it is tracing the trajectory of Ashvalayana's growth. And if you look at the Tika, it it uh, Tika is a certain kind of a commentary. Short notes is called Tika. Short notes on the uh, on the Upanishad uh, itself. And so here there is I think Anandagiri's Tika. So we'll just refer to 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 a little bit of that. Uh, provided I can find it. So I know I had it here, but I had two files open and the other one is missing in action. Let me see. There it is. Okay. So the Tika, it is, uh, you know, here it says that um, uh, it says Adhihi. Adhihi means, he says, uh, you know, uh, Adhihi, please teach me, please teach me, oh, but before that, we are here before that, we are in the first mantra, Adha Ashvalayanha Bhagavantam Parameshtinam Upasametya Uvaja. Adha, as we said, they are thereafter. And then he says, the, the Tika says, Adha Sadhana Chatushtaya Sampati Anantaram. Anantaram means afterwards. Afterwards means what? After breakfast? No. <laughs> Sadhana Chatushtaya Sampati Anantaram. After having gained the infrastructure, the infrastructure, the personality of the person who is studying Vedanta, that kind of an infrastructure, that after having gained this infrastructure, then only the person has approached the teacher. Sadhana Chatushtaya. Chatushtaya means group of four. So four things one has to cultivate. Oh, only four things, I think I can manage that. Four things, theek hai, chalo, no problem. What are they? Sadhana Chatushtaya means four things. Four things that I absolutely have to have before I approach the teacher for the knowledge. Ideally, before I approach the teacher for the knowledge. Or if I have the desire for the knowledge, I can collect these four things en route. As I am in the journey, in the course of the journey, also I can collect. That is also there. It can be done both ways. But in the olden days, this is how it was done. So, sadhana chatushtaya sampatti anantaram means having gained these things and then only, then only going to the teacher. So, what are these four things? The first one is called viveka, not the name of an Indian man. No, viveka means discernment discrimination discernment discrimination means what discernment between what and what discernment between nitya and anitya nitya means what nitya means that which is infinite anitya that which is finite 
This is the discernment which is needed. The discernment between Nitya and Anitya. Between the finite and the infinite. The finite is what I encounter, what I can objectify, what I can grasp, what I can hold, what I can see, what I can hear. These are all objects of my sense organs, objects of the various means of knowledge that I operate. This is the, 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 the distinction. And this is all what? Anitya. Anitya. And what is Nitya? <laughs> Myself alone, the one who says everything is Anitya. That one happens to be Nitya. What do I want? Nitya. <laughs> what do I not want? Anitya. This is what is Viveka. Viveka is seeing the spoof because it is a spoof because sometimes what happens the, the anitya shines like nitya. Really? Anitya shines like nitya. Come to me. <laughs> Look, I'm the real thing. And then what is the real thing? Coca-Cola. That's all. Anitya. <laughs> anitya. Anything you go after Anitya, whatever you can catch hold of Anitya, whatever you can objectify Anitya, whatever you can talk about as an object, Anitya, 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 Anitya. That which you cannot grasp, that which you can understand as the truth of yourself, but you cannot objectify, that is Nitya. So many Anityas, so little time, only one Nitya, Kevala, Kaivalya, that is only me. The one who is the deemer of Anitya, the one who says everything is Anitya, happens to be Nitya. So Nitya, Nitya, Vastu, Viveka. So Viveka is the ability to discriminate. And then uh, uh, it has a twin brother called Vairagya. Vairagya means once you have the viveka, once you have the discernment between what is real, what is forever and what is temporary, what is not real, what is mithya, then what to do? Go after that which is anitya. No. I need the courage to drop the anitya pursuit. This is vairagya. The discernment the discernment should lead to some consequences, right? Discernment is viveka and then the vairagya means what? Vairagya means the ability to drop the dead and inconsequential pursuits that just lead me to uh, sickness, a heart sickness which is called samsara, which, which leads me to always in the service of the finite when what I really want is the infinite in the form of that free I without any inhibitions, without any fears, without any limitations. So the ability to drop the anitya, the cultivation of that ability is vairagya. And that is what meant going to the teacher. That is what meant in the olden times. Now, you know, first we Google the Gurukulam. Oh, how well, let me, you know, and the poor uh, acharyas also have to put photos of the rooms in the ashrams. Okay, let me see how the rooms are. <laughs> Double room, single room. What do I want? AC room, non-AC room. And the most important question. Question, what's the question? Is there Wi-Fi at the ashram? <laughs> Does it work? <laughs> All this I want to know before I set foot. And then I come with a whole lot of desire, devices that, that keep me plugged in to the world. Always, even at the Gurukulam, I am what? I am in the, I am in the Samsara Kulam as well at the same time. And so uh, I, I come equipped with everything that is not I, but which goes with the name I iPhone, iMac, iPad, all of it is anatma. Not I, not I, not I, but still, this is what I meant. It shines as though it is I. These, these people are very, very clever. <laughs> Even though it is anatma, it shines as though it is atma. <laughs> very, very interesting. So I come with iPad, iMac, i iBook, i this, i that, you know, and then iPhone. 
and then but that is not how it was in the olden days vairagya means do you take a ferry to the other side of the river where the gurukulam is and then when you reach the you take a little raft you make a little raft or a small boat you, you do there you reach there and then you set fire to the boat <laughs> this is vairagya to set fire to the boat lest you be tempted to go back until the gain of the knowledge you don't go back by which time you trust that they used to trust what that you know some other boat will come if i'm meant to go, go back this is some other thing will happen some other boat will come something else will happen so i don't have to worry about it and so this is the uh, this is viveka we have covered vairagya and then what then we have mumukshutvam third one is mumukshutvam mumukshutvam means moksha me bhuyaditi ichcha tivra ichcha e an intense desire what is the desire may i be free may i have moksha this is the intense desire <laughs> this is the absolutely intense desire may i be free may i have moksha everything this is the third one. oh we have covered so quickly all three let's see i told you there are only four things yeah sadhana chatushtaya only one more thing is left but before that this moksha is is you know is the desire for moksha is uh, not like any other desire it should be a, a, a an urgent desire like the fellow whose hair is on fire if your hair is on fire and and you are jumping up and down oh no oh no oh no my brain cells are melting help quick and then somebody a good samaritan points to a pond a little 200 yards away 300 yards away you know you can make a dash for it points to a pond of water oh relief at last even seeing that pond of water one is happy and then one just like oh thank you thank you thank you goddess thank you bhagavan here i go and then you run the fellow runs towards the water while going towards the water does the person say aha there is a starbucks here let me pick up some mocha <laughs> on the way to the pond to douse this head which is on fire you don't even see the starbucks Starbucks, you don't see the cafe, you don't see a shop, uh, you, even though there may be many shops are full of glittering baubles and things, everything that you want, you don't see anything, not at all, you don't see anything at all. What do you see? That water. You don't care if it is sludgy, you don't care if it is muddy, you just go plunge yourself into it anamat fully. And then you come out with relief. The desire for moksha must be like that. <laughs> Not the, the one whose head is on fire, the hair is on fire. And then the urgency with which you will look for a body of water. And on the way, there are no desires to fulfill. All the desires are suspended because of the urgency of this matter to be addressed. And that is what mumukshuta is mumuksha mumukshu is the one who has mumuksha mumuksha is uh, mumukshutvam mumuksha mumukshuta all same means moksho me bhuyat moksha me bhuyat may i have moksha iti icha this kind of a very 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 strong desire <laughs> this kind of a desire is called Mumuksha. So, how many have we covered? What have we covered? Viveka, Vairagya, Mumuksha. What is the fourth one? Well, the fourth one is actually six. What? You said there were only four things. Yes, I, we want to break it gently. <laughs> we don't want people to run away. That's why Lord Krishna also. Uh, when he discusses the qualifications for this knowledge, 
he discusses it at the beginning of the 13th chapter. One would think the qualification should come in the beginning. Okay, first chapter is just Arjuna's uh, lamentation, his, his rant. Okay, no problem. But then it should at least come in the second chapter. No, 13th chapter. Why? Because if Lord Krishna had put it in the second chapter, then that would be the last chapter people would have studied. Because there is a list of 20 qualities. Amanitvamadam vitvam himsakshanti rajavam ajaryopasana sthairyam shauchamatma vinigraha indri arteshu vai ragyam anahankar evacha janma mrityu jara vyadi dukha doshanu darshanam asaktirana vishvangaha putradara grihadishu nityancha samachitatvam ishtanishtopa patishu mai jananya yogena bhaktiravya vicharini vivikta desha se vitvam Aratirjana samsadi, adhyat magnana nityatvam, tatvagnana, no, uh, all these things. Eta jnanam iti proktam, agnanam atho anyatha. This is, this is the whole list of 20 qualities. And so if it was presented right at the beginning, people would have said, this is beyond my ken, I cannot do this. <laughs> this is beyond my capacity. Bye bye Vedanta. <laughs> See you in the next Janma or whatever. So therefore, in the beginning you say only four things. And the fourth thing happens to be six things. And the six things are very easy. One of them we will be looking at in great detail. So now it's only five things. Okay. So that is now easier. So what is these six things? The six things is called Shamadi Shatka Sampattihi. So first we have sadhana chatushtaya sampatti, sadhana chatushtaya sampatti, the fourfold treasure and then inside the fourfold treasure is the sixfold treasure. Shamadi shatka sampatti. And so what is this shamadi shatka sampatti? This is, the, the, this is in the form of the six things to have. Six pack we try to call it and what is what is this pack of six? The pack of six is the, uh, starting with the word Shama, a resolved mind. Resolved mind means what? There is, there is a certain tranquility. How did this tranquility come about? The tranquility came about by not engaging the organs of actions. Withdrawing the organs of actions from the objects of desire and even the objects of uh, not desire. What do you mean withdrawing them from the object of, of uh, dvesha? Meaning, supposing somebody I don't like is there, what do I feel like doing? I feel like cuffing the fellow in the face. I don't do that. That is dhamma. Bahyendra nigraha dhamaha, the management of the Karmendriyas is called Dhamma. Gyanendriyas also is Dhamma. And the management of the mind, because you can, you can, for the sake of society, you, you don't say what you mean and you don't, you can, you can, uh, uh, you can, what is that? Add to, you can add to some certain things. You can just do, uh, you can just, uh, uh, be civilized, you can pretend to be civilized in the uh, in the thing, uh, in the society. You can pretend to be civilized. But then afterwards, where will that anger go? Where will the pain go? Where will the sorrow go? Releasing that pain, releasing that uh, those questions, releasing those fears, processing that pain without targeting yourself and the other is called Shama. So just like Viveka Vairagya, Shama and Dhamma also go together. Shama and Dhamma go together. And then we have Uparati. Uparati means not sweating the small stuff. Letting go. Uparati is letting go. Always we have to remember letting go is better than getting low after, after catching hold of all kinds of things. So, you let go, you just let it be. Oh, somebody is doing something, let them. Oh, but they are not doing it properly. Let them not do it what you think is proper. 
let them do it improperly. There are many ways of doing something. Oh, but they will get into trouble. Let them. Just about letting go. Usually there is a sense of control. Wanting to control the universe and everybody else there. It's a deep, deep insecurity that engenders a sense of control uh, around the universe, around oneself, around everybody else. That sense of control is because of intense fear. Intense fear. This is what it is. And that intense fear is managed by letting go. Managed by letting go. You, you let go. What else is there? And that control you understand is not about, uh, you can't control the universe. You cannot control the universe at all. And then so, why do I try? Because I, I'm, I, am, I feel out of control. And so I learn to resolve that. This is all inner work. This is the, that's why this Vidya is so, so precious because it only comes, comes after this application of this inner work. And then so I let go of control. I let go of trying to manage everybody and everything. I learn only to manage my own emotions. That's enough. So then we have Titiksha. Titiksha is, uh, you know, mm, the ability to, to be, to self-soothe in a way is Titiksha. Especially when things don't go one's way. So th that ability for some kind of an, uh, to bring back the dysregulated emotions into a state of regulation is titiksha. Things are upsetting many times. Things are, you, they don't go your way. You can't control other people, much less you can control your own emotions. And so titiksha is bringing it back to an equilibrium. By what? by cultivating the muscles of what is called forbearance. Forbearance. You cultivate the forbearance. And how do you cultivate forbearance? The ability to put up with difficulty and discomfort. This has to be cultivated. The ability to put up with difficulty and discomfort. If I don't have, then I'll be reacting all over the place. Oh, too hot, too hot, too hot, too hot, too hot, too hot. Of course, it is summer. It's going to be hot. Deal with it. Put on the fan. I don't have fan. Okay, doesn't matter. Go to somebody's house. Visit somebody who has a fan. Okay? Or who is a fan. So, <laughs> doesn't matter. Visit somebody who has a fan. And then, or go sit in a library or something where there is AC or a fan, some public building. So many options are there. No, but none of those options are there. It doesn't matter. Learn to live with it. Because this is, this is for oneself. This is for oneself, really. Learning to live with discomfort is a very, very wonderful skill and a great sign of emotional growth. This is what I mean by self-soothe. Like right now, this is not possible. You want an air conditioner, but it is not here. It is in the shop somewhere. The shop is closed. You can't have it right now. So I learned to self-soothe. Too hot, too cold. Okay, it is winter. It's going to be cold. <laughs> too dry, too wet. And so this is, this is what is the tiksha. The tiksha is the ability to self-soothe, the ability to uh, have, to, to grow the muscles of forbearance so that I'm not always agitated and emotionally dysregulated because of circumstances which are beyond my control. This is what is titiksha. Shama, dama, uparati, titiksha, shraddha is something which we will see here, which means reverence and devotion, that is shraddha. So we don't have to go into that. The cultivation of this Shraddha means there is something to see and I have to have an open mind. That is called Shraddha. And then uh, Shraddha and then what? Samadhanam. Samadhanam means the, the, the uh, uh, Shraddha 
Um, am I missing anything? Yeah, Shamadama Ukarati, Titiksha, Shraddha, Samadhanam. Samadhanam means single minded focus, like the flight of the Garuda we saw in the opening prayer. Single minded focus. That is Samadhanam. This constitutes the six pack. And then let us, uh, let us go back to the uh, let us go back to the Tika and see. So, Atha, so in one word, the Upanishad has conveyed what I talked about in the last 15 minutes. Atha, enough. Same thing, this word is used even in the Brahma Sutra. Atha to Brahma Jignasa. There also Atha, thereafter, after having studied the Upanishad, after having studied, after having cultivated all this, then Brahma Jignasa comes, the desire to know Brahman. And so here, Atha means Sadhana Chatushtaya Sampatti Anantaram Ashwalaganaha. Who is Ashwalaganaha? Ashwala Gotra Udbhavaha. Ashwala Gotra Udbhavaha. The one whose lineage is from Ashwala. Ashwalaganaha. We have all this wonderful, this Adi Vriddhi comes, you know, because it is a certain, uh, with certain suffixes. Um, this, uh, this, you know, Tatra Bhavam, Tatra Bhavaha, like this, all these things, Tandita suffixes, uh, all this there. So this Adi Vriddhi, the Ashwala becomes Ashwala, Ashwala Ganaha, one who is born in the Ashwala Gotra. And who is this Ashwala Yana? The, the Tika says, Rigveda Charya, the one who was teaching about Rigveda, Dharma, etc. Bhagav, and then the person, Upa Sametya, Upa Pari Sametya, Pari Sametya, Upa Sametya means having approached reverentially. Who? Not, not anybody, here the teacher. Bhagavantam. The one who is like Bhagavan. Pujavantam. Bhagavantam means the one who is deserving of worship. That is the one. Pujavantam, Bhagavantam, Parisametya, Upasametya, and how? Samitpanihi. Shastri yena vidhina samipya, uh, uh, samipam agatya. Shastri yena vidhina, Shastra vidhina. Because the Shastra has a certain vidhi. Vidhi means a method, a, a method to approach the teacher. You don't approach the teacher, how do you not, what, what to not do? You know, sometimes there are uh, the, these kinds of things we need. Like there was a TV show, what was it called? What to not wear. <laughs> not what to wear, <laughs> what to not wear, <laughs> so that you look like a dump. Okay, so how to how to not dress? And so here also, what to not do when you approach the teacher? What to not do? You know, uh, like for example, you don't go and, what should I say? Um, tap the teacher on the back. You slap the teacher on the back and say, hey, let's hang out and you teach me a little bit of this Vedanta, Shmedanta, what say? You don't do that. Okay, you don't do that because that is not vidhivat. So this vidhivat upasadhanam, the, the approaching, the approaching means the approach of this, uh, approaching the teacher according to the, how the Shastra lays down the convention for approaching the teacher. And that we see in the Mundaka Upanishad. Samitpanihi saha guru meva abhigachet, it is written there. Samitpanihi means along with the um, twigs, twigs, bundle of twigs, the twigs that are uh, tied with a, the, a length of grass, a bundle of twigs to give to the teacher, provided of course the teacher is a grihastha. If the teacher is a householder, then the teacher has to do Agnihotra every day. We talked about that. So the teacher has to do Agnihotra. So therefore, to help the teacher, uh, to uh, so that the teacher doesn't have to go in the middle of the night and collect the twigs that have fallen in order to do Yajna. You don't cut the tree for Yajna. You collect the droppings of the trees in the form of small branches and twigs you collect beforehand. And so the student 
shows the readiness of serve, to serve readiness of service i am here and i have anticipated your need you have to do yagya every day along with your uh, wife so here is one yagya's worth of sticks or two yagya's worth of sticks why because in that time i want you to teach me please and I, and you, you you will see that it is very useful to have me around the student wants to be around the teacher why because the student doesn't want to miss what the teacher is teaching and so therefore the student is ready to you can't just hang around the teacher so you make yourself busy serving the teacher in the hope that some nuggets will come your way this is what is the way of approaching and then this is exactly what the person does here who ashvalayanaha parisametya upasametya sametya means uh, you know having gone properly according to the shastriya vidhi shastriyena vidhina samipya sam, uh, upasametya samipam agatya having come close to the teacher what did he say he said adhi bhagavo brahma vidyam varishtham sada sadbhi sevyamanam nigudham yaya chirat sarva papam vyapohya parat param purusham yati vidvam in fact when ashvalayana talks we don't know if he is the teacher or if he is the student so erudite he is so knowledgeable he is we don't know if he is the teacher or if he is the student amazing it is and so what does he say he says adhihi bhagavan oh but we i think we have not seen two words here one one minute we have not seen yeah he bhagavantam bhagavantam means the pujavantam the one who is worthy of worship parameshtinam parameshtinam means the guru of gurus grand sire guru dakshadi prajapatinam pitamahah tam so the one who taught daksha the one who taught prajapati who is that lord brahma ji himself sarva utkrishth sthan nivasam the one who is the occupying the most exalted place among all the teachers of brahma vidya see he chose the best teacher the absolute best teacher that one could choose he he chooses and the best teacher and the best student come together to understand this and enjoy this knowledge it is just beautiful really really wonderful that's why always the best teacher is chosen the best student is chosen because you want to see you want to make an example out of it remember the example of if taylor swift becomes interested in vedanta what a furor it will create that is how it is so here all the wonderful examples are upheld okay and so here the um, so parameshtinam bhagavantam pujavantam and the one who is the most exalted teacher he approaches with utmost reverence utmost reverence and then he says what adhihi adhihi means the, the, the uh, you know so adhi is the upasarga upasarga means the uh, prefix then what is the dhatu in in to go and then it is in the form of the the he the he usually means it is in the imperative mood imperative mood means what urgent teach me now don't say come back after 5 years don't say come back after 10 years don't say come back after you have retired from your job i want now why my head is on fire my hair is on fire i have teevra mumukshuta teach me now that's why the student commands the teacher to teach in the imperative mood not because he does not respect the teacher but he because he wants to he wants this knowledge yesterday he already feels that he has wasted so much time and so therefore i want it just now <laughs> right now don't wait any more give it to me now and 
technically in the shastra the word adhihi has a special meaning adhihi even though it means teach grammatically to teach technically it means mad anugrahartham smara please teach me how how to teach me don't teach me pedantically pedantically means all scholarly look up the sixth verse of the sixth chapter of the bhagavad gita i don't want that look up the 15th mantra of the second portion of the mundaka upanishad i don't need that make me transformed how you know how will you make me transform remember madanugrahartham for blessing me you please remember how it was for you when you met your teacher you must also have been like me this is the beauty of vedanta the teacher doesn't drop from the sky <laughs> the teacher is not some some the teacher is not the one who says i am god and all of you are what odd no that is not vedanta at all the knowledge that says you are no different from me what is the, the only difference is you are still in the process of knowing that's the only difference there is no difference really speaking between teacher and the taught and this is the beauty of vedanta teacher says i am ishvara the student also can say what i am in the process of knowing i do am ishvara there is no difference and so uh, the the teacher is the one who is what again in the mundaka upanishad it is said the teacher is the one who is a shrotriya means the one who has studied very well from his teacher from her teacher who studied from his teacher who studied from her teacher his teacher her teacher his teacher her teacher all the way to shiva all the way to narayana we can trace it like that sada shiva samarambham shankaracharya madhyamam asmadacharya paryantam vande guru paramparam so we can we, we can say like that and then the the one who is or we can say narayanam padma bhuvam vasishtham uh, shaktim cha tat putra parasharam cha like this we can trace the lineage through narayana or through shiva names of the lord ultimately it is all the lord alone it is just so beautiful and so here the the person who has gone to a teacher and submitted to the teacher and transformed their themselves from being a samsari to a sangha uninvolved from a agnani to vidwan from somebody who was completely clueless about the i to the one who yeah, who who is understanding what this i is about that is that transformation i want to undergo and of course you underwent this transformation perhaps decades ago perhaps long time ago but now i am just starting out so oh dear teacher for my sake remember recall what it was like for you and then bless me with that knowledge so adhi is a very big word it means mad anugrahartham smara remember recall for my benefit how it was for you how was it for you to learn this how was it for you to understand this and how what all were the difficulties and how did your teacher because the difficulties are not important how did your teacher dispel the difficulties for you use the same pedagogy use the same methodology and bring me out of this forest of samsara this is what it means madanugrahartham smara and then adhihi bhagavah bhagavah means bhagavan o oh lord and then what is this lord he samagra dharma jnana vairagya aishwarya yashah shriman beautiful if it gives the whole definition of bhagavan here the one who is all knowledge samagram gyanam samagram aishwaryam samagras shrihi the one who is all over lordship fully has 
limitless overlordship, limitless knowledge, limitless resources, limitless vairagya, because once you have resources, if you don't have vairagya, what's the use? Here it's limitless vairagya, even though the commanding limitless resources and then everything, you know, aishwarya yashaha. Yashaha means the, uh, the fame, limitless fame. This is what is Bhagavan. And here he, 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 it is a, uh, the, the Upanishad teaches us to see the teacher as Bhagavan to transcend the body-mind sense complex of the teacher and learn only how to relate to that which the, the, that role of the teacher who teaches, that's all. Oh, the teacher has this habit, the teacher has that habit, the teacher goes here, the teacher goes there. Close your eyes to that, really. Chant the, the prayer, Bhadram Pashyema, Bhadram Shrinuyama. Let me hear what is only auspicious. Let me look for only the auspicious things. And so here, the, this is what, this is what, this is very specific to our culture. We see the, 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 the Bhagavan that I want to see is not available in me because of my own self-ignorance or so I think it is not available in me. So the Bhagavan I want to see, the Bhagavan I want to be, I see temporarily in the teacher. This is what it is. So the teacher becomes a place where Bhagavan is invoked because I want to connect to that Bhagavan and I want to see Bhagavan and I want to have darshan of the Bhagavan within but the darshan of the Bhagavan within is not possible because I have full, I am full of ragadveshas. I do not have emotional maturity. I do not, I have many things coming in the way. So the teacher becomes a wonderful stand-in for what it is like to do to, to, for the one who can see Bhagavan. So in, instead of the teacher, I see Bhagavan. That's why we pray Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha. So the, this is what it is. Bhagavan is Guru, is Bhagavan in all forms and every form of Bhagavan I invoke in the Guru and here he does that. This is, this is Bhagavan. And then, and then when I say, please teach me Brahma Vidya, the Brahma Vidya is coming not from the mouth of some, some other person who looks like me or who is my age or whatever, but who is what? Who is Bhagavan? So then what kind of an attitude will I have? I will have a very wonderful attitude towards that knowledge. I will have much more receptivity. So then this is the, this is what is called Brahma Vidya. What is this Brahma Vidya? The Tika itself will explain. Brahma Vidyam, Brahmanaha, Desha Kala Vastu, Parichheda Shunyasya Vidya. So what is this Vidya? Brahmanaha Vidya, Brahma Vidya. The knowledge of Brahman. Here of Brahman is what? The knowledge that is Brahman. Okay, because there is no of here. The knowledge that is Brahman. It is the, 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 the Shashti is Aupachariki Shashti. It is, it is almost like a, uh, you know, symbolic sixth case of. The genitive case here, the knowledge of Brahman, it's like it's just symbolic, metaphorical, like saying the head of Rahu. What is Rahu? All head. <laughs> okay. And then so head of Rahu means it, it doesn't have really any meaning. Similarly, knowledge of Brahman is to be better translated as knowledge which is Brahman, which is in the form of Brahman. And what is that knowledge? The Tika describes very well. Desha, Kala, Vastu, Paricheda, Shunyasya, Vidya. So, Brahmanaha, Vidya is, what is that uh, uh, Brahman? Uh, Paricheda Shunyaha, Paricheda Shunyam. And so, Paricheda means conditioning, limitations. Paricheda, limitation. Paricheda Shunya means totally free of limitations, means limitless. This knowledge of limitlessness and how is, what are the, 
what are the three sources of limitations is also mentioned here. What are the three sources of limitation? Space-wise limitation. First one, deshataha parichheda. Desha parichheda means deshataha kalataha vastutaha parichheda. So, deshataha parichinnaha means space-wise conditioned, limited. So, space-wise limited means what? This body which I call belonging to me, this body is occupying this space in, in, in right now. It can't be elsewhere in that space. So, this is confined to this space. This space of Bharat, right now it is occupying, so it is confined to this space. And then Kalataha, it is confined to this time. This body is not in Adi Shankara's time. <laughs> It may have been in another body, who knows, but it's not in the form of this body. This body is born here, born now, born at a particular time, at a particular place, with a particular purpose, particular articulation, particular, you know, space and time. Desha kala parichedaha. Desha, desha taha parichinnaha. Conditioned by space. Conditioned by time. Conditioned means don't think of shampoo and conditioner. Okay, that's not the conditioner we are talking about here. The agent of conditioning is the, the agent that delimits the delimits oneself space wise, time wise. Then we have another one, Vastutaha Parichinnaha. Vastu Paricheda means uh, object wise conditioning, object wise limitation meaning if something is in the form of a mango it cannot suddenly turn into an orange or cannot be also in the form of an orange so it is confined to being in the form of a mango and having the name mango but this desha paricheda kala paricheda vastu paricheda these three limitations are there for everything i encounter every object Whatever I can see, whatever I can know, whatever I can objectify suffers from these three limitations. Think about it. Anything you see, look around your room right now. You know, you can see what? You can see a, maybe you are sitting on a chair and that chair is what? Space-wise limited, time-wise limited, object-wise limited. The ceiling, space-wise, time-wise, object-wise limited. Walls, space-wise, time-wise, object-wise limited. Any knick-knack that you have around, space-wise, time-wise, object-wise limited. The computer through which this class is streaming, space-wise, time-wise, object-wise, finite, limited. Then what is there that is not limited? <laughs> the one who is looking around, that, that is you. <laughs> That's the only thing which has to be discovered and that is what Brahma Vidya, the knowledge of myself as free of space, as free of time and as free of uh, any uh, being a particular object. This is the knowledge that Ashwalayana wants. This is the knowledge he says, I would like to do that. I, I would like to understand this, this Vidya. Buddha. And then he says, Buddhi tat sakshat kara karanam ta. Sakshat kara karanam means, sakshat kara karanam means it is not enough to just know this as an intellectual academic pursuit. I want this knowledge to percolate the seeds of this buddhi, all the cells of this buddhi. I want it to sit in my heart. I want this knowledge to bless me, to be. Uh, this knowledge of oneness to bless me to be more accommodative, more compassionate, more free, more uh, being, uh, what, being okay with other people's shortcomings. That is moksha. That I don't even feel the need to point out their shortcomings because I'm beyond it. I don't need to do that. Not, not only am I not bothered by their shortcomings, I am also not having the pressure to tell them unless they ask me, unless I, you know, they have taken me to be their teacher or something else, it's a different thing. It, it, it is really 
the ability to be with my own shortcomings and the ability to acknowledge and be okay with other people's shortcomings is really the definition of moksha. And that is the transformation that Ashwalayana seeks and wants. That is called Sakshat Karanam. So Sakshat Karana Karanam, Sakshat Kara Karanam, the cause of that. How is this go? Is this is this? Uh, Brahma Vidya going to flower and blossom in my heart. How is it going to spread its fragrance? That I want to know. Why? Because that is what I want in my life. So I want that knowledge. And then what is that? Varishtam. Adishayena Shreshtam. Varishtam. Varishtam means the most exalted. The most exalted Vidya. This is the Vidya that I want which is free of time, free of space, free of being an object and that which I want fully. I don't want a little portion of it. I want this knowledge to be free of errors, to be free of doubts, to be free of vagueness. I want it to sit in the heart and emanate. I want to these, this, uh, the seeds of Vedanta to blossom in my heart and to emanate the fragrance in the form of compassion, accommodation and forgiveness. This is what moksha is. This is what Ashwalayana wants. And a few other adjectives are there. We'll see that in the next sessions. Om Purnamadhaf Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. One, one, one small question, Nama. Yes. If somebody misses the, misses the lecture, is there any way to get yeah, the lecture? Be, uh, Sahadev should be putting it on YouTube. Uh, uh, which YouTube? The uh, uh, Arshavidya Gurukulam YouTube. Arshavidya okay. YouTube. It should be there. It should be there uh, shortly. I have already sent him the last two talks. And then uh, this one also, as soon as it renders, I will send that to him. Thank you. Yes, Any other questions? Pranam Swami Neji. Oh, um, Hari Om. Thank you. Thank you. Swamiji, I, I just have one uh, question. Uh, sure. My name is uh, Prashant. I'm uh, from Sydney. Uh, yes. uh, when you, where you said like uh, the knowledge of Brahman here is only symbolic. It is yes. knowledge that is Brahman. Yes. Um, could, you, could you please uh, uh, elaborate on that, how it is? Yes, the of course. It's, when, when I say knowledge of botany, knowledge of chemistry, knowledge of biology, then that knowledge is other than me. You see? Oh. I am the pursuer, I am the catcher and the killer and the conqueror of this knowledge. And the knowledge is an object that I objectify and then I say, I have this knowledge, I got it, I nailed it, I have it. I become the person who, who is the wielder of the knowledge. Here, the knowledge which is Brahman and you happen to be the Brahman, it is a knowledge without the wielder. It is a knowledge without the knower, really. It is the knowledge that displaces the knower from being the knower of that knowledge. If Brahman becomes a knowledge that, that I know of, then you know what happens? Then And then that becomes finite. It becomes an object. So how to keep the knowledge, the truth of the subject, the, the knower in the form of the ahankara is knocked off. That is why people find this knowledge a little scary. <laughs> that is why they are a little afraid. That's why they are a little frightened. So this is, this is exactly why one has to study this because I want to, as long as the knower is in place, I know of Brahman. It will always be remote. It will always be removed in time, in space. Here I am Brahman, it's the knowledge that is Brahman, it is the knowledge not of me, it is a knowledge that is me. I have to own it up. Does that make it a little clearer? Yes, yes, Swamiji. Yeah. Thank you for that. That is, that is what it is. 
If Indra had mastered the Indriyas, what is the truth that uh, you know we have Indriya stories of Indriya Indra and Anasuya? That was before he mastered. Okay, don't worry about it. That is in the Puranas. Yeah, he had mastered the Indriyas. This was before the uh, before the thing was mastered. All right. Yeah, before he had, he now knows the error of his ways because he has mastered this. Yeah, and uh, thank you, Chitra. Chitra has given the YouTube link for Arsha uh, Vidya Gurukulam. So you can um, uh, copy paste that and then you can, uh, if you miss uh, or if you want to listen to it again, you are welcome to go to this place. All right. Yeah. Um, that, yes, tell me. Uh, in the beginning, it says Vyashema Deva Hitam. No, is that... Deva Hitam. It is a typo. Deva Hitam. The other thing is, is there the, the um, Tika, is that posted somewhere? No. And is want that... it? You want the Tika? Just to follow along with what oh, you're okay. saying. Yeah, I can also share it. But I, 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 let me see if I can. Let me see if I can uh, uh, send it here. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Okay. So sometimes I can send it here itself. Let's see. So it's called... Copy. Is there Shankar Bhashya also on? Oh, it doesn't have Shankar Bhashya. That's why we are doing the Tika. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have. Let me see if it will go here. If it will go here, that will be the best. Everybody can have it. Uh, let me know you got it. Is it, it? It is coming through. Did it come? Yes. Yes. Tika. Yes. Yeah. Swamiji. yeah, you can yes, download Swamiji. the Tika. Okay, it is in Sanskrit. It's not transcribed into English or something. That's why I was hesitating to share because I didn't want people to run away. So the but then if you want it, it is here. All right. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So many other simple questions from Niji. So when the teacher teaches to a student, the yeah. subject tailor made for the student as for the student to understand. Yeah. So it is tailor made there. So when, when I say teach me how you learn from the te your teacher, how you heard from a teacher, that means yeah. it's only tailor made for the, um, the teacher who we go to, and it may not be uh, suitable to me, right? No, that's the beauty of it. It is tailor made for everybody. That is the same pedagogy. Same pedagogy was uh, you know, operated by the teacher in the Kano Upanishad and the teacher in the Kato Upanishad. It's timeless. Because the samsara is the same. Pain is same. There is not, you know, different pains now in this, this, this time and this place. It is not like that. Samsara is same. Pain is same. Fear is same. That's why, because they are all so universal, that is why we can have this timeless vidya and timeless pedagogies. What is the what is custom made is just maybe some jokes and some things here and there. That's all. That is all it is. Yeah. Same sorrow. You know, the sorrow of the 21st century is not any different from the sorrow of the 15th century. It's not any different from the sorrow that was suffered suffered by the people in the fifth century. It's all the same. All the same. Yeah, same sorrow. All right, yeah. Okay. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you later.